U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is due to hold talks in China from Sunday as Washington seeks to reinforce lines of communication with the leadership in Beijing. This uh, is the visit that was postponed uh, from February after the U.S. shot down a Chinese spy balloon. Channels between the two sides are well established, but U.S. officials complain that it's been difficult to get their Chinese counterparts to the phone in times of crisis. Tensions are currently high, of course, especially over the issue of Taiwan. For its part, China says it's always ready to talk. Here's Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin. The U.S. always talks about the need for dialogue and communication. The door to dialogue and communication from the Chinese side is wide open, and communication between the two countries has never been interrupted. Well, Tong Zhao is a senior fellow in the nuclear policy program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. He's also a visiting research scholar at Princeton University's Science and Global Security program. Uh, welcome to DW. So the, the U.S. says uh, more needs to be done to keep the lines of communication open, and we heard the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman there saying uh, the phones are working just fine. So who should we believe? I think uh, both sides are technically right. Uh, the hardware of the hotlines is readily available. Um, at the leadership level, U.S. and China had established a leadership uh, hotline as early as uh, 1998. And between the two countries' top military officials, they set up a defense telephone link as early as 2008. So the hardware is definitely available. The, the issue is whether China would pick up the phone at a time of a crisis, how much China wants to make use of the uh, hardware, and whether China in a crisis would uh, refuse to pick up the phone as a means to uh, impose coercive leverage on the United States. But also besides the issue of hotline, there is a bigger issue of whether senior leaders from the two sides can meet and have extensive conversations in person. We know that at Singapore's Shangri-La dialogue, the two countries' defense the uh, ministers only uh, shook hands. That is not enough to solve so many uh, big and deep disagreements between the two sides. So we should be pleased that this visit is going ahead at all? It's uh, definitely a very uh, useful uh, way to resume senior level uh, dialogue and engagement between the two sides. We know that uh, uh, high-level diplomacy was uh, free, frozen uh, since the balloon incident. And now it looks like uh, China uh, is again um, paying attention to the importance of stabilizing a uh, relationship with the United States, even though this visit by Secretary Blinken is going to be more symbolic than substantive. Uh, but still, uh, with uh, this high-level meeting uh, taking place, it will make it much more easier and possible for operational level engagement and discussions to, to resume. There are so many specific uh, issue areas in which the two countries have genuine uh, overlapping interests. And, and this will create the right political environment, which China thinks is so important for starting comprehensive bilateral engagement. And so how has the centralization of, of power around Xi Jinping played into these communication difficulties? Well, I think the centralization of power under Mr. Xi uh, is a very important variable uh, in the bilateral relationship. One of the reasons, for example, uh, the Chinese military officials have been reluctant to pick up phones at a time of crisis is because they need to get approval uh, from Mr. Xi uh, first before talking before they can feel comfortable talking with their American counterparts. Uh, so that centralization creates obstacles in timely uh, uh, discussion between the two sides. But more importantly, in a highly centralized system, the leadership's personal worldview and ad ideological values, is so much amplified across the country through, by, uh, you know, through China's powerful bureaucracy, which means when Mr. Xi 
has this fundamental concern about American values, American political system uh, as posing a, a existential threat to Chinese regime security and political security. And when Mr. Xi personally is calling for Chinese party cadres and officials and general public to adopt a fighting spirit, that makes Chinese officials across the board uh, to try to stand up against perceived American uh, hostility. Hostility. There is much less appetite on the Chinese side at the operational level uh, to make necessary concessions or to conduct right. uh, uh, necessary self-reflection on China's own foreign policy behavior. Uh, yesterday, we, we heard from David uh, Sachs from the Council on uh, Foreign uh, Relations that China is deliberately becoming more aggressive and unpredictable, knowing that the U.S. Uh, uh, is keen to cool things down. Now, he's even suggested that the U.S. should respond in kind in order to give uh, Beijing a uh, pause for thought. What would your advice to the White House be? Well, um, I don't think uh, a tit-for-tat strategy uh, on the American part uh, would be useful. Uh, to develop uh, a pragmatic uh, and stable relationship with China. Um, we have to recognize that uh, today uh, in China's very closed information environment, Beijing genuinely attributes all the troubles and the problems in the bilateral relationship to American behaviors alone. Uh, and China thinks it's all because of American uh, provocations uh, and hostility. Um, so uh, under this environment, given how China has convinced itself that all the problems are caused by the United States, I think, unfortunately, uh, White House will have to take the initiative to reach out to China and try to proactively uh, craft an engagement strategy that would uh, help clarify American strategic intention uh, and uh, reduce Chinese misunderstanding of American policies. Right. So, so briefly, then, um, you, you said that this, this, the visit of uh, Secretary Blinken, um, we shouldn't expect anything uh, uh, of substance to come out of it. So they go, they talk, they shake hands, they, they look at the cameras, and that's all we can expect, really. Well, we don't know yet. Uh, perhaps there will be uh, some important meetings with uh, cabinet members of the Chinese government. Of course, the biggest indicator of Chinese attitude is whether Secretary Blinken will get to have a meeting with Chinese paramount leader, Mr. Xi. If he gets that meeting, that will show that China now has significantly uh, uh, readjusted its approach towards the United States. OK, so we'll all have to look out uh, for that one uh, over the next couple of days. Uh, thank you for outlining that uh, so clearly for us. Tong Zhao uh, from the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Thank you so much. Thank you.